Wellington is a large private asset manager based in Boston, Massachusetts. We invest assets in primarily public markets for clients around the globe. Our sustainable investment philosophy is partner, invest, engage. We partner with research institutions of all disciplines, trying to drive to a deeper understanding of the influence that are shaping our capital markets and our economy over time. We use those insights to inform our investments in the pursuit of better outcomes for our clients. And finally, we engage with the companies that we're investing in to help them shape their strategy to overcome some of these risks, such as physical climate risk or other issues that are related to sustainability. In September of 2018, we announced a collaboration with Woods Hole Research Center, which we're really excited about. And the goal there is to assess climate science and climate change and its effect on the capital markets. And so we view climate change as a risk. And like any other risk in our client portfolios, we want to have an informed view on it. We have six key climate variables that are under study this year. They are heat, drought, wildfire, hurricane, flood, and water access. And what we're attempting to do is to really understand those variables, the best measures of them, put them on maps, then place capital market insights on top of those maps. We're calling this process uh, integrated spatial finance. So spatial finance is the visual of the maps. The integration is really with our investors who have years and years of experience and insight with these companies and sectors and so they help us add more questions and analysis into the maps and into the capital market overlays. And from a societal perspective of course there's a big idea here which is that if we can influence pricing in capital markets that could actually affect change quicker than more political discussion may. People often ask, how do you use climate research to make investment decisions or to help shape your portfolio? We can take our climate models and we can take some of our climate analysis and get a really good sense for areas in the world for which the adversity based on rising temperature or drought conditions will make agricultural productivity much worse in the future. And when you think about that problem in the context of a world where population is likely to continue to grow over the next several decades, it seems very evident that the world needs much more agriculture technology and improvement in things like crop production and agricultural yields. And so that can take you to a handful of select companies that are focused on agricultural technology, things that improve crop protection, that improve the efficiency of when you irrigate, where you irrigate, when you deploy seeds, where you deploy seeds to make every acre of land more productive today than it has been in the past because that's what the world will need based on the climate adversity that our models are suggesting. I think the asset management community has a couple of roles to play in advancing the SDGs. Uh, the one that most people think about really first is advocacy, that is getting companies and managements to make changes uh, so that they are engaging in activities that are more aligned with the SDGs, whether that is improving their environmental practices, their social practices, uh, doing something that is better for their workers. But there's also a second role that's really important, and that is in the allocation of capital itself. Just by providing capital to better, more sustainable companies, to more impact issuers, we are going to lower the cost of capital for those companies and conversely raise the cost of capital for the less good actors. And that is going to be really important in using the markets to uh, advance the SDGs. We really have two objectives. Number one is to generate great financial returns for our clients. That means thinking about uh, generating good risk-adjusted returns. It's always what we're trying to do in fixed income. Number two is to do that by investing in securities that uh, we think are going to have a positive social or environmental impact. So an example of that would be uh, investing in a wind power company where what they're doing really is generating clean power. 
another example is a company that's providing clean water and sanitation improvements to people in emerging markets, particularly in rural areas. Economic development is a messy concept. And the first thing to do to try and make it investable is to break it down into its component parts. The way we've thought about breaking it down in our team is into four main categories. The first is enhancements in productivity. The second is improving living standards. The third is sustainability. And then the fourth is inclusiveness. And what we do in our team is to go hunting for investment ideas and themes related to those four big structural areas of economic development over time. So some of the themes that we're very excited about right now in the portfolio um, are healthcare, infrastructure and logistics, and environmental consciousness. Healthcare is an enormous investment opportunity over the long term in emerging markets. There almost isn't a country in EM trying to spend less on healthcare today. They have many of the same demographic and health issues that we have in the developed world, but they're coming off a much lower starting point. The second theme that I find very exciting right now is infrastructure and logistics. So the physical movement of capital around the emerging markets. So you think about ports, rail, road, and the logistics companies that facilitate that movement of capital. That's a huge investment opportunity, but particularly in Asia. So my lens into the investment world is really focused on emerging markets. But the more research I do, the more travel I do focused on the idea of economic development, the more I realize it's not an emerging market issue alone. Many of the requirements to improve social mobility, inclusiveness, those are as urgently needed in the developed world as they are in emerging markets. So what does engagement mean for Wellington management? Our ESG integration and engagement philosophy is based on two core tenets. The first is a belief that material sustainability issues and ESG issues are at the end of the day strategic business issues that can impact financial performance. So we want to focus on identifying them, analyzing them, and bringing them to our portfolio managers so they can be incorporated in financial decisions for their clients. It doesn't just stop at the research. The second tenet of our engagement process is a belief that as informed and active owners, we have a responsibility as a fiduciary for our clients to speak up when we see the opportunity for improvement. And that is where engagement comes in. Through our partnership with the Woods Hole Research Center, we'll be able to raise awareness with the companies at the highest levels about what the science is telling us and where they're most vulnerable, and we'll encourage them to invest in their own resilience efforts because we'll have the evidence that they need to, to justify those investments. I think more and more investment firms are recognizing the potential growth of the companies that are aimed at solving these world's pressing problems or aimed at, at addressing the UN SDGs. So I think you'll continue to see asset managers focus their efforts on achieving these goals and that you'll continue to see increased innovation towards that end.